Hey, I'm Jimmy from JimmyRose.me and in this video you're going to learn how to collect visual feedback from your clients or users. So that might be for a website you've designed or for your SaaS product, just a way for your clients or users to give you feedback visually uh, from their web browser. Now recently we needed to collect uh, some visual feedback for our SaaS products called Content Snare. There are a bunch of tools out there that can help you with this for both SaaS and web design. I looked at a bunch of different ones, including user snap, user back and bug herd. Uh, in this video, you're going to learn which one I chose and why. Uh, and more importantly, how I've set it up so that all the feedback comes into one place that makes it really easy to sort and group and filter and really nail down um, all the feedback that you get. Now, this isn't just a review. Like most of my videos, we're going to be looking at some other automation and workflow tools like Zapier and Airtable, which I'll get into later. If you'd like to learn more about how to automate your business, uh, get better processes, get more productive in your business and life, please hit that subscribe button below for more videos videos like this. You can also head over to jimmyrose.me and sign up for the uh, email list if you'd like to get uh, productivity tips and tricks and automation stuff delivered direct to your inbox. But now let's get on with the visual feedback tool video. There were a few criteria that I needed to satisfy when I was looking for a tool to handle this for me. And the first thing is that it had to be dead simple for our users to use. Uh, to me, this is by far the most important piece. If you're asking someone to go out of their way to give you feedback, you better bloody make sure it's easy for them to do. I, I don't want to be the person saying, hey, can you do this thing for me? But you've got to follow these like 18 steps to make it work. I want it to be insanely easy for them. One, because it's the, the right thing to do. And two, because we'll get better feedback. If things are easy, people will do it. If things are hard, they're gonna put it off or not do it at all. So number one, it's gotta be easy. Number two, it had to have integrations. Uh, specifically, I really wanted to get this data into some kind of spreadsheet tool like Airtable or Google Sheets. Um, so usually Zapier is a really good one to look for. If they have Zapier integration, you can easily get that data into another tool. Tools like Spreadsheets and Airtable give you just much better ability to sort and group and filter the feedback that you do get. And number three, this is a little bit specific to our situation, but it had to allow data to be passed through from the, the browser or from our SaaS app. So in our case, we wanted to tell the feedback widget uh, what language the person had switched on in our app. So what, like basically what features they had turned on in our application. So then we could see that the feedback was relative to those settings that they had turned on. Uh, and of course the pricing had to be right. I ended up falling on user snap. It ticked all these boxes and it starts at only $9 a month. The process to give feedback with user snap is insanely easy. And you can see here it's added a tab. So we're getting uh, feedback on translations inside our application. They click that and all it does is go straight into this mode to draw a box, right? So they can draw a box around like, let's say this is the thing they want to provide feedback on. They draw the box and type something in there and hit send. That process is so streamlined. I've used a bunch of other feedback tools where you click it and then you have to like click a button in the box that pops up to say you want to draw on the screen and then it might bring up some tools at the top which are like boxes or scribbles or whatever. Um, you know, and that might be good for your use case. Um, but in our case, I really just wanted it to be dead simple. So they click this, they draw the box around something and then they type in. I absolutely love that. And there's basically no way that you can mess it up, which is, which is awesome. So to install the code, to actually install that widget, I'm not gonna dig into in too much detail because this is a whole topic on its own, uh, but it is just a piece of JavaScript that you install using Usersnap. When you sign up for an account uh, over here at Usersnap, they will give you the JavaScript to install. If I jump through here, you can see it there. And basically I've just used Google Tag Manager to install this just because we use this in our application already. Tag Manager is also beyond the scope of this video, but I'll just do a little overview here. We have added the code in here from UserSnap, 
but we've actually added a couple of extra lines here so we can get the language. So this is a specific setting they're using. This could be anything. This could be like the page URL they're on. Um, you can put whatever data you like uh, into this custom section. That was the, one of the criteria we needed uh, in this tool. And then also we pass through the user ID. And this is just so we know who gave us the feedback. So once someone goes through and uses that feedback tool that we just covered, once they give us some feedback, it comes into user snap into this feedback list section here. And this is all the feedback people have provided. So you can see here, there's the one we just did where I screenshotted that little section in there and I wrote some random text. And the custom data comes into here. You gotta click this more details and you can see the custom data that we added through the JavaScript. But to me, this is a little bit difficult to work with. Like there's no way for me to go and filter um, by, you know, that custom data. There are some filtering options in here. Like it even tries to work out the sentiment from the typing, like whether it's like a positive, negative or neutral feedback. And you can obviously mark all the different feedback pieces off as done. But to be honest, I just much prefer a spreadsheet style view. And this is how we bring it in over at Airtable. If you're not familiar with Airtable, it is essentially a spreadsheet app on steroids. You can see for each piece of feedback. So here's the one that I just submitted. There is the current language we're on. If you open that up, there is the screenshot that was taken with the highlight, the text that was typed, who it was typed by, and when this feedback was actually added. The reason I love this so much is because Airtable gives you really cool grouping capabilities and the ability to add different columns. So I've got one here called status, for example, and I've created this as a drop-down field. So we can click on this and say that it's rejected, accepted, or done. So let's say that's just a test one. So I don't want anything to do with that. We're going to reject it. So we could set up a filter now to not show any items that are rejected. So if we say status is not rejected, now that is gone. And likewise, if we have finished with one of these, like maybe we mark this one as done, we can also expand that filter to say where the status is also not done. So now we have a view where we can only see the feedback items that we haven't taken action on yet. But taking this a step further, we can actually use the grouping function in Airtable, which was the most important part for me, because we are getting feedback here on different languages in Contents now. Now this could be anything, right? So let's say you were getting feedback on a website, you might get the URL through to this column. So you get the getting feedback on different URLs on a website. Now, if you were looking through this list and there was a home page and then the about page and then the contact page, and they're all little bits of feedback for each page, you don't really want to work through those one at a time. It makes sense to say group all the contact form feedback bits together and all the about page feedback bits together. So you can just action them all in one go. And that's where this group function comes in handy. So you can go group by, in my case, language code. And then we have look all the German here and then the English feedback here. So again, imagining if this was different pages on your website, you would be able to group the feedback by the URL that it was given on, which is going to make your process a lot simpler to go through and action all of that feedback. And then you can mark them off as done later and they'll disappear from the list. Pretty bloody handy, right? A really nice system to work within uh, to process feedback. Now you're probably wondering how this data actually got into here from UserSnap. Well, that was the other critical piece of what we needed. Now I was looking for a feedback tool that integrated with Zapier. If you're not familiar with Zapier, it is simply a way to move data around the web. I have a lot of videos on Zapier on my channel, so feel free to browse around. I will link up to my Zapier tutorial below. I'm just gonna quickly show you what the Zap looks like for this. So in UserSnap, we have an option that says whenever there is new feedback, we're pushing that data into Airtable. It's really that simple. So there's the, the base, so content snare languages, uh, and then we're putting in the feedback number, the comment that they left, the screenshot, the language code. So again, that could be the URL of the website and then who posted it. That's all there is to it. That data then automatically comes through into Airtable, ready for us to filter and group and process all of that feedback. 
I'm absolutely stoked with this system. It's made our process a lot easier already. Now I know there were a lot of bits and pieces in this video. There was Google Tag Manager, there was Zapier, there was Airtable and User Snap itself. Unfortunately, without making this an hour long video, I can't go into all of them in detail. If you would like any more information on any of those tools, just drop in a comment and I will see if there's a video that I can refer you to that will help you out in setting it up. That's it for this video. I hope that was helpful to see the tool that we chose in the end and, and kind of the thought process behind getting that data out and into another system and why it's important to have that grouping and sorting and filtering available. Uh, I'm really happy with this solution that uh, we've implemented now and it's made it just a lot simpler for both us and the clients that are giving us feedback. So it's ticked all the boxes for me. I hope you get something out of that as well. If you would like to learn more about getting more productive and automating your business, please hit that subscribe button below or head over to jimmyrose.me and sign up for the email list. That's it. And I'll see you in the next video.